joining the HOA Beat. I'm Cindy Sullivan with Key Community Management, and today we have Ben Carb with us today from Moretz and Scuffco. Thank you, Ben, for joining us. He's an attorney with the firm, and we want to talk today about HOAs and questions about who's liable. Who's liable? That is always the big question. Yes. And that's an important topic and one that I think a lot of people misunderstand. Within an HOA, the HOA is oftentimes looked at as the party who's responsible for resolving disputes, be they disputes with owners, with cities, with anybody. When someone has a problem, they call the HOA and really the management company and say, well, fix this problem. And in reality, an HOA has very limited purposes. And one of them is to control what people do on their property or on the HOA's property, but it's not a good forum for controlling people's behavior and not a forum at all for disputes between two different owners. And that's something that a lot of people don't understand. Yeah, it's an interesting uh, thing that certainly does continue to arise. Uh, so one of the questions we wanna ask is, you know, we get calls um, about who, you know, the folks will give us a scenario and they'll say who is liable for this or that. And so I want to talk about what parameters do we go to? What do we look at um, as far as laws and um, documents? Where do we start? Well, there's actually a number of different places we look. And if we're talking about documents, we really start with our articles of incorporation and then we go to our CCRs, our covenants, conditions, and restrictions, our bylaws, our rules and regulations. And then we also have some complementary rules and, and laws out there, uh, such as local laws and ordinances. Uh, we have federal laws that come into play for some HOAs. And they're really, a, those are the main sources of responsibility and liability, uh, but we also have two other categories, if you will. Uh, sometimes an HOA can be, can have a duty to people. Uh, it's basically whether the HOA is responsible for allowing something to happen. Uh, we look at that and it's, it's actually the legal term negligence, uh, whether the HOA has a duty to control something or, or to prevent something from happening. We also have what's known as tort liability, which a tort is when someone typically does something to another person a classic example is a car wreck. So those are all sources of liability and responsibility for all HOAs. So it may be important for each board to have a law office they work with to understand where to look when, or maybe if a situation comes up that's not clear, they just talk with the law office. Right, and yeah. when we talk about liability, we generally look to all of those documents and if there's not a responsibility within those documents, mm -hmm. an HOA is not liable. So in other words, if you right. have CCRs that say the HOA will maintain the common areas, well, that's a duty the HOA has to meet. Mm -hmm. But if it doesn't say that, the HOA does not have to do it typically. Right, right. Okay, so let's talk about a specific example that came up recently. So we received a call from a resident in the community with a pool and they were at the pool and a child's float uh, hit another child in the pool and I guess there was some slight you know, uh, damage to the, you know, the child was hurt and um, the, the resident called us to say they were gonna sue the HOA. And let's talk about that scenario. And that's one we hear, not that exact one, but we do hear those kind of complaints pretty frequently. And I do not believe that in that case, the HOA would be responsible. As I said when we started out, an HOA is not good at controlling behavior between people. If somebody hits another person with a float, with a fist, with anything, yeah. the HOA doesn't have a duty most of the time to control what one person does to another. Mm -hmm. So in that situation, the HOA would not be responsible because it has no duty there. Right, okay. And that's what we did, we directed them to just work it out between you know the, the parents the situation yep that's the right way to do okay it. okay so that's good so let's also talk about something that comes up and that's with dogs so a lot of people in residents a lot of residents in the communities rather have dogs and um, what if a dog bites someone you know whether or not we have sent a letter um, say maybe we knew there was a situation where a dog was you know maybe dangerous and we sent a letter um, 
But even so, if that type of thing happens where the dog bites someone, talk about that liability. Yes, and I think every management company and HOA attorney at some point gets a call from an owner who is aggravated about a dog. Yes. And typically, if a dog bites someone, the HOA is not responsible. That's that's not always universally true, but a dog, again, it comes down to controlling behavior. An right. HOA cannot control, usually, what one person's dog does to another person. So the typical answer is if someone's dog bites another person, while the HOA may be sorry and could take future steps to prohibit people from walking dogs without leashes, things like that, right. it's not responsible when a dog bites somebody. Right, okay, and so one of the things uh, also with dogs is there are instances where you might want to call the police, animal control, you know, residents, if there is an extreme situation. Right. right, most of the time there are local ordinances that prohibit people from keeping dangerous or noisy dogs. Um, so usually the first call should be to the police or to animal control, not right. to your HOA. Right. Right. Okay, good. So another example that comes up a lot is that of drainage between lots. Um, we hope it's a perfect science, but it's just not. So sometimes, you know, you've got two lots and, and the attempt to divert water in the right way from one lot, you know, in a certain area is, is not working and it's, it's going on to another lot. So we, we get calls, um, you know, asking if we can intervene and cause you know, the person to, to do what they need to do. So let's talk about that. And that's another call we get pretty frequently where someone will call and say, my neighbor's lawn is causing a big puddle on my lawn. Yeah. Well, while again, the HOA may be sorry that that's happening, the HOA doesn't usually have authority and really shouldn't have authority to go onto one owner's lot and regulate the slope of the land. So that's another situation where usually the HOA is not responsible for that. That's a dispute between those two owners and they need to resolve it between their, themselves. So yes. that's, that's one of those situations where people love to call the HOA to say, go get this owner and we say, I'm sorry, we can't do anything. Well, and I think too, Ben, what's important to note is that if we get involved with something that is not supposed to involve the HOA, then you know what, you're involved. And so if there becomes a legal matter that's a bigger picture that's happening, you're part of the whole puzzle because you, you know, stepped in, right? So that's creating a liability at that point for the HOA. Right. When the HOA starts to assume responsibilities that it's not really supposed to have, well, then you may have bought yourself a lawsuit at that point. If the HOA starts regulating the water flow from one lot to another, in your example, yeah then the HOA may now be responsible to prevent that from happening in the future. So you can inadvertently, really, and people have the best of intentions, yeah. but you can basically create duties upon yourself that you really should not have. That's an interesting dilemma, you know, because our job is to keep the peace, you know, to help people, to answer those calls, answer those emails, and um, sometimes I think it's about just having the knowledge, saying, hey, I'm going to check on this, let me get back to you, maybe rather than reacting to say, no problem, let me help you, you know, maybe step back and say, let's just make sure if we're supposed to do anything. Right. We always have to look at the big picture as to whether the dispute is something the HOA can or even should get involved with. Right. And there's a lot of disputes people don't understand that distinction. And a lot of the time an HOA has no authority to get involved even if it wanted to. That's right. Well, so what are some things that you've encountered where the HOA is liable and it really, you know, comes to that? Well, it, it comes down to the assumption of a duty that it really should not have ever assumed in the first place. Mm -hmm. An example would be if an HOA decided to start cutting branches on trees, well, if a tree falls after it cut the branches, it may have just assumed responsibility for what happened to that tree. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the kind of example where an HOA may just be trying to beautify trying to beautify the neighborhood, right. but it really has overstepped its authority and it's created liability. Or maybe if uh, there's a vacant lot and it's, people are complaining about it and the HOA cleans it up, maybe that's an example where you're setting a precedent. And that's a very that's good example, thing. yes. Mm -hmm. if, if an HOA starts cleaning a lot and it leaves a big gaping hole and somebody person walks into that hole and hurts themselves, 
the HOA may not at the end of the day be responsible, but it's you can bet it's going to be a party to a lawsuit. So yeah. it's never good to open yourself up to potential liability if you don't have to. Right. Well, also, um, as we mentioned before, you know, some issues that come up are strictly, you know, criminal or some other police related item. So um, any thoughts on that? Yes, I've got a lot of thoughts on that. <laughs> A lot of the time we will get calls that somebody is disorderly or in some cases we've seen a person get shot in a neighborhood which while it's unfortunate the HOA really can't do much about that. My advice is always call the police first and really the HOA can't really do much in that situation. That's right. Well. That's good. So, you know, we hope today has helped you to just think through some different things. Maybe your community will create a policy to make it clearer, you know, as you move forward. But thank you, Ben, for your perspective. And we want to encourage you to visit our websites. Um, Key Community Management is www.keycmi.com. And moretzandscufka.com is www. Just Google it. Moretz and Scufka. You get an award if you can spell it the first time. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, helping you make your community great.